stop number six here on the Mountain Race Series schedule in the chase brings us to Kansas Speedway. The second half of the chase, or what you want to call the playoffs of NASCAR, are about to begin here at Kansas. We saw a big time shuffle in the standings last week. Besides one person, that was James McLeod. He finished second for the second consecutive week in the chase. Extended his points lead to 26 points as the other 11 drivers swap positions one way or another and really change the look of the championship battle. But now James has the pressure today to try and extend his points lead and maybe get a win. But we'll have to wait and see if he can hang on, if these other drivers can capitalize and gain some ground back on the 25 team. But we are here, guys, for chase race number six as we head back to the back straightaway and on this newly repaved Kansas Speedway. Should be an interesting race. The drivers in practice use the apron on the bottom, on the front straightaway. They would be racing on the apron to gain some ground on each other. So expect to see a lot of drivers using the apron on the front straightaway. It is legal. That is a legal move. You can go under the line, run the apron, and gain some momentum going into turn one. We'll see if we can capitalize over the race we had in the Nationwide Series. We had an impressive three-wide finish. Well, a battle for the lead, I should say. Michael Cosby made a daring move into turn one making a three wide and he ended up going on and winning the race with that move so maybe we might see that again we had a three wide finish at the line last week at Charlotte Tim Fralick edged out James McLeod and Red Bell we'll see what happens today though on the pole is Seth Cole who is fourth in the stinks 38 points out of the lead he needs another win he has not won since the Daytona 500 in his debut race was a pretty impressive thing to do but since then he has not had many chances to go for a win he did make the chase Right now, fourth in the standings. Alongside him is the New Hampshire winner, uh, Charles Jackson, in the 15. Row 2 has two-time winner this season, Zach Carlson, a former Daytona 500 winner as well. Dougie Shears trying to get to victory lane. He has amp energy on the car once again. Row 3 has a couple of newer drivers, a couple of rookies. Brandon Parsons in the 99 with a new look. The Kellogg's paint scheme. And in the 1, another car with a new look. The McDonald Chevrolet, driven by Emilio Navarro. Row 4 has... Chaser Steven Gonzalez, who is right now 10th in the stings, 82 points out. He needs to win. He needs a lot of luck on his side to get back into this. Battle for the championship last season with Jack Richards for ended up finishing second. He needs to win a race. He's been looking for that win. Just his qualifying efforts keep him in for chances to win. He will start in the top 10 as well. Alongside Ryan Juke, a two-time winner as well. And rounding out your top 10 is a couple of RCR teammates. Sean Henley, who had a dis disappointing Richmond after starting on the pole, finished 30th. He derailed himself down the standings to 7th. He'll start ninth. Alongside his teammate is Aaron Williams, who is 8th in the standings right behind him. Both of them looking for a good run. There's Trent Dunham, Red Bell, the cute couple. They'll start in the next row in 11th and 12th. And I wanted to point out, I did fail, like I did a bunch of times in that race. Uh, I said Trent was teammates to Matthew Rodriguez. That was not the case. The 8 car is not a RCR car. I just got it mixed up because I was thinking they had the same paint scheme. That is why Trent's in the Budweiser paint scheme this week and not the good wrench car like Sean is, so fix that. But the story of the qualifying session has to be the points leader. Look what happened to him. He is in the fourth to last row. 36th place for James McLeod. You see Eric Burton right in front of him in 34th. James is the worst qualifying chaser. He's right beside his teammate Dylan Pote, but man, they did not have the qualifying setup at all this week. James is going to have to really dig deep today if he wants to keep his points lead as pretty much every other chase actually every other chaser is starting in front of him so James is right now in a bad territory and there could be wrecks any time because people are using that apron and you see in the back so that could be a big problem today for James McLeod who's still looking for that second win of the season and also trying to become the all time winningest driver trying to pass Ralph Green and get his 8th win of his career they're tied right now Ralph's starting a couple rows ahead of him but we'll not hold you guys any longer as Seth Cole and Charles Jackson will get ready to lead him down. Pace car will start rolling off. We'll hear the radio chatter and all that good stuff and so on. Just like I told these boys in the meeting, we don't need anything over the top today. We got a good race car, we got a good driver, we got a good pit crew. All we gotta do is just everybody carry the weight. We'll be just fine at the end of this thing. Ten four. Final bus. Alright guys, here's your starting lineup for today's Hollywood Casino 400 here at Kansas Speedway. Chase race number six.
Alright, there's your starting lineup for today's race here at Kansas Speedway as the pace car is leading them around. Seth Cole and Charles Jackson are a couple good friends. Going to try to go around and try to tame Kansas and get a win. Seth and Charles both looking for their second win of the season. But this is a lot bigger for Seth Cole as he is trying to get back up in the championship battle along with these other 11 drivers trying to run down James McLeod. The pace car is headed off to pit road as Seth Cole and Charles Jackson will lead them down this long front straightaway. They're actually already using the apron and the green flag is out and we are racing here at Kansas. Chase race number six is green. We want to see how these drivers go as they're already making it three wide. These chasers are not wasting any time. They're kicking those non-chasers up to top. Aaron Williams and Steven Gonzalez are working their way up the middle. They're, I mean, they're getting rid of those non-chasers and working their way up. Seth Cole did not keep the lead. Here comes Zach Carlson for the lead. Sean Henley, he is catapulted up to second from ninth. He has Trent Dunham right behind him as Carlson will lead lap one. Look at him using the apron. Trent Dunham was right there. James Qualls had to let out. Look at this mess of cars. Look at this three wide racing they got going on. You don't usually see this at Kansas. Oh, they're four wide. Sean Henley just went up the hill. I don't know what happened there. Seeing Gonzalez really got close to him right there. That's going to cost him. And Seth Cole and Charles Jackson are falling back like a rock. And look at James McLeod. Wow, where did he come from? Oh, Aaron Reed. Oh, he got turned back to last week's winner, Tim Fraley. He's going to come back up. Right into Michael Causey. Oh, a huge crash in the back of the field. Horrible crash. Aaron Reed, Michael Causey, Taylor Orndorff, Adrian Becker, Ryan Duke, Dylan Young, Barney Ward, Matt Wells. Tim Fraley got through it okay, though. Wow. And that was right back where James McCall started, but he had gotten away from the back of the pack. Wow, that did not take long. See, that's the product getting on the apron or getting under somebody. Fraley just hooked Aaron Reed and took him out and a lot of others. Look at the smoke. You can't even see. And there's James McCall. He's in 11th place after four laps. How? We don't know. Cars are smoking, and Brandon Parson and the 99 is now leading the race, and his teammate Danny Wells is up to second. Oh, Jack Rasmussen just rode Danny up the hill. Now, Daryl Parsons is racing hard with Zach Carlson. They make contact, and this 25 car made up so much ground in such a little time. How? Him and Eric Burton started 34th and 30, uh, no, 33rd, I think, and 36th. And they're up in the top five, basically. How in the world? That tells you how much it can change here. I mean, the field is separated. Look at this. I don't know how those drivers did that. Pulse here is Seth Cole's back in 29th. There's Dylan Young. He's right in front of the leaders. Jack Rasmussen and Daryl Parson. That's Brandon's father going for the lead. They just went right by his son. And look at James McLeod and Cody Lamas. That 25 car, I thought he had a bad qualifying effort. He did. Oh, they're Dylan Young. I can't believe this. I would not expect somebody to start 36th place and we're getting ready to come to the line for lap 7 to be battling for the lead. He's going to end up leading this lap. Maybe they're coming to the line. And James did lead the lap. Oh, my gosh. This has to be. This is incredible what we're seeing right now. How can somebody start 36th place, get up to the lead just like that? He was just in front of that wreck, and he just flying away. Wow, James McLeod just, he said there's pressure on him, but he's proven a point. I mean, he's surprising me and everybody else. And look who just came out of nowhere behind him. Here comes Sean Galligan. These drivers start near the back, and they're working their way to the front. Kyle Sosnowski's going for third on Daryl Parsons. He's moving up. Zach Carlson still maintaining a top five position. Red Bell's going around Cody Lamas for sixth. Steven Gonzalez is right now eighth. Eric Byrne is ninth, and Aaron Williams just took tenth place away from Brandon Parsons. Oh, they're slowing up. There's Barney Ward. He's holding up Red Bell and Eric Burton. Aaron Williams just gained a couple spots. Now Eric Burns gonna get hung up behind him. Go back up toward the front. McLeod is just leaving. I don't know what. I can't believe that. There's Ralph Green back here. Dylan Young. There's Sean Henley. He's back in 32nd. I really don't know what's going on with this three car. But as soon as the chase starts, like his luck just ran out the door. You don't have to hope for a big wreck for McLeod to wreck. I mean, this is just not what he wanted. And they're really getting held up by Barney Ward up here. Look out. Eric Burns is still stuck behind him. I don't know. He can't do nothing right now. Look at Sean Henley. He's going to gain a huge amount of spots right there. That'll help. Seth Cole's still hung up behind him. He's still hung up behind Barney Ward and Jessica Miller. They can't get around Barney Ward. Oh, man. This is hurting Seth Cole's chances really bad. Danny Wells is back here as well. I don't know what's going on with these drivers. They started near the front. Spell back. Trent Dunham's falling back. Brian Acosta's not up there. He's second in the standings. 
There's Jacob Rodriguez. He's starting to fall back. These chasers are not... Nobody's running good right now amongst the chasers, really. There's Jack Richards. He's 14th behind teammate Randy Carpenter. Liam Irvig. There's Matthew Rodriguez. He's in the Budweiser paint scheme, but I figured he could run that because it didn't blend in with the 8 or the 3. Brody Banta slipped up back there. He's really losing ground. Oh, and James McLeod lost the lead. He's back in 5th place now. Cody Lama just got around his teammate, Daryl Parsons. And here comes Steven Gonzalez. What Trip Dunham calls him, Stevie Pie, is now going for second, and he got it. He's going for the lead. Gonzalez knows if he wants to try to battle for the championship two years in a row, he has to win a race. It's not really helping him, though, that the points leader is right there behind him, but there's no way you can stop him. Look who else is up there in the top five. Aaron Williams, two-time winner this season at Dover and Talladega, or excuse me, Daytona. He got into the wild card situation. He hasn't really had a spectacular run yet, and he's up here battling as they're battling for the lead. Gonzalez really needs to lead this lap. He's not going to get it. What was the differential? Oh, it was that close. Look at that. Two more thousands of a second. Wow. And Gonzalez is going to slide up the track now. Aaron Williams is on the back bumper of James McLeod. He knows it's his chance. He needs to get back in this championship hunt. I'm telling you, there's nothing these chasers can do with that 25 car just right there up front on every week. He survived Talladega. He finished second. He survived Charlotte. He finished second. And now he's in the lead right now. Next time by will be halfway. Actually, I think it'll be halfway. As James McClellan got another lap. Aaron Williams has the lead, but he slides up. Here comes Sean Galligan. The Englishman going for the lead in the 83. I don't think anything else is going on back here. And Galligan gets the lead. We haven't got to say Galligan has led a while. It's been a while since he's led. But now he's led a lap here at Kansas. He got the young rookie, Kyle Sosnowski, right behind him in the 20. Trying to get on the back bumper of the 83. Now he's going to go under him. Liam Irving and Daryl Parsons and Cody Lamas. Good run for these drivers. A lot of these drivers, none of these have won. Oh, there's Dylan Young. He's going to come right, right down front of Kyle Sosnowski. Whoa, that was close. Dylan Young's very slow. He's off the pace. And look at Sean Galligan. He's gone. See ya. Oh, there's going to be a wreck right here. Uh-oh. Oh, look at the gaggle of cars back Four wide. James McLeod backed out of it. He was the one going to be in the bad situation. He got out of it. Oh, and these drivers are going to help behind Dylan Young. Oh, there's a lot of cussing on the radio right now. I, I guarantee that. Aaron Williams is one of them. He's one of the chasers. They can't clear Dylan Young. There's going to be a wreck. Oh, Dylan Young got hooked by Cody Lamas. Oh. These drivers are trying to avoid the nine car. They're sliding by. And these drivers are all up here in the top 10. Now they're not anymore. They're outside the top 20 now. Callum Wells, Danny Wells just caught back up to this pack. Zach Carlson was up there battling for the lead. Now he's all the way back here. He's still stuck behind Dylan Young. I don't think he's happy with that nine car. He's still right behind him. There's Seth Coley's back here in 33rd. Gallagher has the lead. Make sure they're calm down. Oh, they're not. James McQuall is going under. James McLeod and Daryl Parsons. McLeod's in the middle. If anything happens to that 25 car, this whole thing can change. He's in a bad situation right now. Kyle Sosnowski just about hit the wall. A couple cars went by McLeod, but he's hanging around in a good spot. He's in the top 10. Gonzalez, I think, is the only chaser above him. And Gonzalez is not even really battling for the championship right now. He's almost two races behind. And look at Jack Rasmussen, the rookie in the 18. He's up here battling for the lead. He's getting around Brandon Parsons for second. That Snickers Toyota looks really fast. Those Gibbs cars have not been good this season. That's why they got replacement drivers. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, Jack Rasmussen and Kyle Sosnowski, a young team with a veteran team, I guess to say, that struggled this season. And he's running good right now. He just dropped back, but he's back still in fourth place. As Carpenter and Kyle Sosnowski are trying to catch him. Steve Gonzalez pushed Liam Irving right past him, and now he's going under him for second. But Galligan is still leading the race in the 83. That 83 car has not won since last season at Pocono with James McLeod. All the wins have been by James McLeod. But that team's not had much luck since then. Steven Gonzalez is on the back bumper of Sean Galligan. Is he going to give him a bump? No, he's going to just get him a little arrow loose. Gonzalez pulls to the bottom. He's going to use the apron, but not going to lead that lap. And right behind him again is James McLeod. Look at the battle for fourth place. There's Eric Byrne back up here. And James Qualls, who's had nothing but bad luck since the chase started. He would love to get a victory. Three-time winner last season. He's not, gonna win. He's not won this season, that Valvoline Ford. Would love to get up there and win this race as James McLeod just took the lead again. And here comes Galligan and uh, Kyle Sosnowski back. 
You get kicked out of high side, you fall back, you have to work your way back up, it looks like here. Man, this race is crazy. They're going over 200 miles an hour as Qualls now takes the lead in the six. It's just all going to be about timing. It looks like as Qualls already slides up, and here it goes Galligan right by him again. Sean Galligan to the lead once again. Kyle Sosnowski, who had an impressive run so far today, and Brandon Parsons, who just missed out on the chase. He got wrecked by Cody Lomas at Richmond. We remember that. That's how he missed the chase. We'd like some retribution. Tried to get a win in that 99 car. I don't know who led that lap. Uh, they say Sean Galligan, the 83 did. They're three wide for second. Take a look. Oh, and Red Bell stopped on the track. The four car, one of the championship contenders on pit road. I don't know what happened to Red. Oh, man, she just gained so many spots in the stands. She gained five spots last week. She jumped up to third in the standings, and now she's sitting on pit road. What happened to Red? Brandon Parsons is going to take the lead, though, but we're going to go check a replay. Actually, we're going to wait to the end of the race since we're already almost done. We'll check the replay of the wreck and then what happened to Red Bell. But Brandon Parsons with teammate James Qualls on his bumper. We got three and a half laps to go as Qualls takes the lead. But here comes Kyle Sosnowski. Daryl Parsons in fourth place. Four non chasers battling for the win right now. It's been a lot of non chasers winning these chase races. The chasers have not really gotten a win yet besides Danny Wells at Dover. Oh, and there's Dylan Young once again. He holds up James Qualls. Oh, no. It's kind of payback, I think, for James Qualls because he did that to Jack Richards at Michigan. That might have just cost his chance of winning this race. James McLeod, I think, got through it. He did. And Kyle Sosnowski has the lead. They're coming up on Ralph Green, who's a little bit off the pace, as they have two laps to go. And Kyle Sosnowski, in his young career, can he go on and win this race? You can talk about somebody winning quickly. Talk about the guy right behind him going for the lead. Eric Burden won at Texas in his debut race. He's going for the lead. Mike Becker, where did he come from? Three wide for the lead. Mike Becker, we haven't even talked about him. He just came out of nowhere. John Galligan's going to follow him through. And Mike Becker, the Martinsville winner and the All-Star Race winner, is in the lead. The white flag's in the air. Here comes John Galligan. And James McLeod is back again. And look at Trent Dunham back there. Where did Trent come from? Galligan has the lead. McLeod's in position to win again. He's on the inside of his old rod. Sean Galligan and James McLeod racing side by side for the lead. You know McLeod would hate to lose to his old rod. McLeod is going to clear Sean Galligan, and I do not believe this. James McLeod is going to come down, and he's going to win here at Kansas, finally. James McLeod takes the Hollywood Casino 400, and I do not believe the luck he's having. If this kid does not win the championship, I will not know what to say. Holy cow. James McLeod, two second place finishes in a row, and this week he wins. McLeod is just showing why he's going to be the champion this season. Holy cow, I've never seen consistency like this ever in my series. I thought I had, but wow. James McLeod just took the win right out of Sean, right from under Sean Galligan. I mean, that's probably the best way you can get back to victory lane again beating your old ride and James McLeod has just became the new sole possession of the all-time winningest driver in the Mountain Race Series with his eighth career win, second of the season. He has passed Ralph Green as we are talking about him. He just came to pit road. Ralph knows now that he is no longer the winningest driver. He is now number two and James McLeod is your all-time winningest driver in the Mountain Race Series. Holy cow, I'm glad I'm in a good, I am glad I'm in a good mood today. Woo! James McLeod. And look who got second. Trent Dunham. He beat Galligan for second. That's going to help Trent up at man. Actually, you think, but it really doesn't help anybody. McLeod just helped himself out a whole lot more. Wow. What a finish. It was a great weekend at Kansas, period, for both series. That was incredible. James McLeod is your winner today. Trent Dunham will end up second. Sean Galligan ends up third. Daryl Parsons, great run him in fourth. And James Qualls bounced back for a top five and fifth, even though he got hung up behind Dylan Young. Mike Becker ended up sixth. Kyle Sosnowski, seventh. Eric Burton, eighth. Brandon Parsons, ninth. And Dougie Shears, the uh, out, he started fourth, I think. I thought he was supposed to, but he was fourth. He ended up tenth. Good run for Dougie. You see your top 20. You got Liam Irving, Cody Lamas, Tim Frelick. Sean Henley ended up 14th. A little bit better than what he's been getting lately, but he's been a struggle still for that three team. Jack Rasmussen, he had a good run in 15th. He expected more. Steven Gonzalez as well, 16th. Defending champion Jack Richards will end up 17th. 
Matthew Rodriguez, 18th. Charles Jackson, 19th. And Zohar Munn, who started dead last today, will end up 20th. We'll look at the rest of the results. Aaron Williams will end up 21st. Danny Wells, 22nd. you got Brody Banter, Jacob Rodriguez, 24th. Ryan Acosta, 25th. Callum Wells, Dylan Pote, uh, Randy Carpenter, Jessica Miller, Seth Cole will end up 30th. Really going to hurt Seth today. I don't know what happened to him. He got behind, never could catch up. He got hung up behind slow cars, it looks like. Zach Carlson, 31st, same story. Emilio Navarro, he just fell back. Ralph Green had damage. Dylan Young ended up three laps down, 34. Red Bell had a broken valve on the four car. That's what's going to really derail her probably out of this championship battle. Barney Ward was in the wreck. Ryan Duke, Michael Cozzi, Aaron Reed, Adrian Becker, Taylor Orndorff, and Matt Wells were all involved in the multi-car accident on the front straightaway. We're going to go take a look back at it. Actually, before I forget, before I lose a pretty crazy race. I think James is waiting for me to say this or whoever. <laughs> right, race 32 is in the books. Chase race number 6. And now we're going to go back and check the replay on the wreck. And then we're going to check on Red Bell and see what happened to her. Alright, this is back pretty much in the back of the pack. Aaron Reed's up here racing. He's under Eric Byrne and Charles Jackson. Tim Fraley has a run on the inside of him. They come up here. Is there contact right here between the 88 and the 40? No. 36 car just came up and hooked Aaron Reed. Gonna send him for a loop. They hooked together. Fraley could not get off Aaron Reed. Last week's winner gets into Aaron. That's a scary slide. Dylan Poteen, Matthew Rodriguez, Michael Cozzi could not clear him. Ryan Juke gets hit. Dylan Young. Ryan Juke, I think, oh, he almost flipped over. Taylor Orndorff, Barney Ward, Matt Wells got a piece of it right there. Adrian Becker gets hit. Michael Cozzi. Man, Barney Ward hits him again. I didn't see what happened to Ralph Green. He think he just hit somebody. Oh man, he's gonna have a. He's gonna get... Oh, he oh he caught. Oh. Ralph Green clipped his teammate. That's where Ralph Green was off the pace. He barely clipped Aaron Reed's car. That's a bad day when you touch your teammate like that. Don't take that the wrong way. Anyway, oh Tim Fraley just about wrecked right there. About got into Callum Wells. Callum's in a different paint scheme. Couldn't even recognize him. Looks like Liam Irving's car in the 17, but that was Callum today. The Valvoline next gen. We're actually going to go on board with Ralph Green and see what he saw. He saw a pretty good view of that wreck. Well, the former tied for the most wins in the Mountain Race Series history, now second, Ralph Green had one crazy view of this wreck, and this is what he saw as his teammate Aaron Reed gets turned on the front straightaway and comes up basically in front of half the field. Bad day, bad day, bad day. Oh my god, look at him get around the rest of it though. I mean, you have to think about it. Even though he got a little piece of that wreck, he did a really good job. It didn't look like he has any damage. I mean, it, just, it was just enough to mess up the front end. I guess it messed with the heat and everything. He couldn't run fast the car soft the pace but tough break for Ralph Green who's still trying to get back to victory lane this season before it's over been a struggling season for him but not for James McLeod as he hung on today to win at Kansas we'll take you back to the results for one last look and get you to the post race all right guys one last look of the results today top 28 may continue to comment guys uh, do what you guys usually do you guys are doing a great job on that uh, like it if you like the video and all that stuff give it a thumbs up whatever but we are done from today or we're done here today from Kansas Speedway we're looking forward to chase race number seven and actually before I say the nationwide race will be the next one probably getting recorded because I should be caught up evenly four races each that's what I was trying to do out the nationwide series has two less races than the cup series that might change next season I don't know I'm gonna end up making the schedule myself for the nationwide side I know that hasn't really exceeded like I was wanting to this year kind of didn't make it a step up like I was expecting it to but uh, it just happens and I'm going to get out of championship mode in that series so it'll be on RPM like this one but uh, we are done today and James Cloud, congrats on the win his 8th career win like I said and now the new all time winningest driver in the Mountain Dew, Ma Mountain Dew Racing Series I try to say it too fast <laughs> but uh, he is now the top on that but now we are going to take you now to where we're going next week and make sure to check the end of the video the points will be shown as well so we are done here from Kansas As we take our say our last goodbyes to Kansas for the season, we're going to a nightmare of a track. 
that we saw earlier this season. We are going to Martinsville. Yes, Martinsville. We're going to the paperclip, and that's going to be definitely hell. But we'll see what happens, and if James McLeod's hot streak will end, I mean, it doesn't take much to lose the points lead, but we'll have to wait and see. I don't even know what the points are going to look like at this point. I'll have to go do them, but thanks again, guys. We'll keep it short. Thanks for watching. Congrats to James McLeod on the win. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for Barnesville, and stay tuned for the Charlotte race in the Nationwide Series, which will be up next as well. And uh, early happy Martin Luther King Day to everybody. That'll be tomorrow. Or actually, I might put this up on Martin Luther King Day. I'm recording this on Sunday. So uh, if it comes up on, if I end up uploading this tomorrow on, well, Monday, uh, happy Martin Luther King Day today then, or whatever. But uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you guys next time in the Mounder Series Chase and also in the Mopar Nationwide Series as we are getting closer and closer to the end of the season and the battle for the championships, both brew on for both series. Thanks again, guys, and I will see you guys soon.